So what happens if it is not diagnosed on time? Symptoms will be persistent, low quality of life, gap in the patient-physician relationship. Patient also starts uh, disbelieving their doctors. Development of central sensitization of pain, which was not addressed, becomes a psychological pain. It aggravates your pelvic pain further. Progression of disease may increase adhesions and interfere with fertility potential and organ damage. Now, endometriosis is known to cause bowel obstruction. Endometriosis is known to cause rhetoric obstruction and consequent renal failure as well. Patient may be go for, may need an nephrectomy as well. So if you don't address it, it keeps on progressing and the progression can cause permanent organ damage. And most common permanent organ damage is the ovarian failure or uh, fertility decline. So these are the things which we should we keep in mind and help our endometriosis patients. So what changes we can do? Shifting the focus from lesion to patient. Shifting focus from individualized care to multidisciplinary care. Now, if I'm dealing with a patient of endometriosis, like today only we had a patient who had endometriosis. She had a completely frozen pelvis with endometriosis involving her rectosigmoid. Now, if I don't deal with a multidisciplinary team, I will be leaving her rectal or sigmoid lesion. That will lead to further uh, symptoms, aggravation of the symptoms, and she might need multiple surgeries. So we lead a multidisciplinary team where I have a colorectal surgeon, a urosurgeon, a dietitian, a physical therapist, and all these, uh, this kind of teamwork help my endometriosis patients manage their symptoms better and they can manage their disease very well. Now, how it affects the quality of life? One is the pain and second is infertility. Now, pain in 50 to 60% of the patient, it causes pain. In 30 to 50% of the patient, it causes infertility and rest of it can be asymptomatic as well. Now, pain can be painful periods. It can be intercourse pain or sexual pain and pain, chronic pelvic pain, which is continuous before and after periods as well. So please do not dismiss her and their pain is real. They, they are anxious, they are depressed, they get suicidal thoughts. One in 10 women with endometriosis somewhere has got the suicidal thoughts and tried to commit suicide because of the pain and because of not getting the help. It affects their sexuality, it reduces the emotional function, they reduce the quality of life, it compromises their social relationships, it compromises their personal relationships because they can't have intercourse. And it also leads to more divorce and more societal separations as well. Now, coming to the staging of endometriosis, so staging again is not perfect because uh, these staging are surgical staging rather than clinical staging. But uh, like ASRM staging says that minimal endometriosis is stage one and a little more than that is mild, but when endometriomas are present, it becomes stage three and when DIE is present, our uh, pouch is obliterated, it is called a stage four disease. But again, staging uh, does not mean, suppose someone has only an endometrioma uh, and no other lesion uh, and she's called a stage three. So it is uh, basically does not correlate clinically and it does not help us in the clinical management. So staging is basically a surgical, this thing when we uh, see the lesions or it's a sign of communication between the doctors actually. So RSRM basically predicts correlative outcomes. There is no depth of lesions. It does not represent the whole spectrum of disease and no extra pelvic disease is included in this. But we have a latest enzyme classification which was published in January 2021. And this is a very common language, sign language, which can be used widely either on ultrasound or MRI or during surgery. It addresses all the lesions. It, it includes the peritoneal lesions, the ovarian, the tubal lesions, and the rectovaginal septum, uterus ligaments, the rectum, and the extra pelvic sites as well. <laughs>